This is part five of a multi-part series on this subreddit. To see parts one through four, click the card above or the links in the description down below. There was complete pandemonium in the hostel. Girls screaming, crying, shoving and running past each other. It looked like a disaster had struck, and maybe it had, but I certainly couldn't see any signs of the fire. Carol and Vrinda were right behind me, shaken, yes, but calmer than most of the others running helter-skelter in front of us. Even the older girls looked to be panicking. Where is the fire? I asked one of the girls, but she shrieked and ran past me. Don't panic, girls! I tried to see who was shouting that, but I was too short, and my view was being blocked. In a single file, you'll get to safety faster if you do this in an organized way. Don't shove each other. Nobody was in the mood to listen. I yelped as someone pushed me and the girl in front of me stepped on my toes, and she didn't even apologize. I looked behind me and saw that Carol and Vrinda were nowhere near me. Don't panic. This is not a real fire. It is just a drill. I forced my way to the front and the view finally became clear, and I saw that it was Sister Rose speaking to us. She was flanked by Lada, our security guard and a police officer clad in khaki uniform. He had a bandage around his forehead. Must be injured, I reasoned. A drill? Came the offended voice of Shalini, our head girl. At 12.30 in the night? Best time to check the preparedness of the school, the cop lazily replied. You could have traumatized the children, she said aghast. A real fire won't come at a time you're comfortable with, young lady, he replied. And neither will it warn you in advance. Most of you would have died. A girl somewhere started bawling after listening to that. You're scaring the children, Shalini said indignantly. The cop winced. Please stop shouting. You're giving me a headache. Did you ever think that if a real life fire starts, the kids may not take it seriously thinking it was just a drill? She asked. Well, she did have a point there. It really was surprising that the police would try something like that. Unless they weren't cops at all. Could they be Sonica Mam's allies? Were they using the drills as an excuse to scout out our school? If so, that was very brazen of them. Even if Sister Mercy is dealing with Prakash Shur and Rachna Mam, she is still bound to get suspicious at this reckless behavior. Or, my assumption was wrong and the cops were working with Sister Mercy, and she had called them to help her control the situation. If that was true, then Sonika Mam and I were in big trouble. Don't argue with the officer, Shalini, Sister Rose admonished our head girl. Let him do his job. Things proceeded in a more efficient manner after that, with the cop telling us what we were supposed to do in a situation like this as we made our way downstairs. It's the smoke that kills you, he shouted, trying to get his voice heard over the gossiping girls. Most of you will choke to death before the flames even get to touch you. He then proceeded to chew Sister Rose out for not keeping the staircase clear, and then told us how to stop, drop, and roll, and how important it was to stay close to the ground. Keep your face covered with a wet cloth, he said. The more you get to breathe, the higher your chances of survival. As we got down from the stairs, I saw that the boys' hostel had also been emptied, and there were more cops in the field, our designated evacuation spot. Carol saw me and signaled me to come closer. Hey, she said. Did you know that Prakash Sir quit tonight? That piqued my curiosity. He did? I asked. Yep, she replied. Some of the girls are saying he resigned tonight, and that you had something to do with it. What? Me? I said, surprised. Yeah. What exactly happened between you two? Why did you hit him today? She asked. I hadn't even thought of an answer to that. I just bit my lip. They say he tried to attack you. Like, in a bad way. My eyes widened. I furiously shook my head. I mean, he did attack me? but the implication here was something very different. You don't have to say it if you don't want to, she assured me, but know that no one liked him and that everyone thinks you're badass. Really? I asked. She nodded. I looked around and saw that people were indeed staring at me and whispering to each other. They had always done this to make fun of me behind my back, so I had never even considered that the meaning behind these looks could have changed. My social standing had improved at the cost of a flesh-eating rakshas, and I certainly didn't mind. But the fact that Prakash Sir had resigned was very interesting to me. As the police officers gave a short lecture on fire safety, 
I wondered what had happened. Did Sonica Mam succeed in killing him off? Or did Sister Mercy find out about how he attacked me and got rid of him for endangering someone she wanted to protect? I hoped it was the former, because that would spark off even more tensions between his and Rachna Mam's factions. The fire departments will be carrying out checks of all the buildings in the school, so you're going to see them around the campus tomorrow as well, Sister Rose said loudly, bringing me out of my reverie. But you don't have to pay attention to them. You can continue with your classes. Ma'am, is it true that Prakash Sir has resigned? I heard someone ask, and I felt more eyes on me. What the administration does has very little to do with you, Shreya, Sister Rose replied. We'll tell you if there is anything you need to know. Now run along, it's past your bedtime already. All the excitement had died down by the time we began going back to our rooms. I was almost on the stairs, avoiding those who wanted to talk to me about Prakash Sir on the way, when I felt a firm hand on my shoulders. Nana, Sister Rose said, can I speak with you? I was about to say yes, but she was already pulling me off to the side. Sister Mercy wants to meet you tomorrow for lunch, she said after we got to a relatively secluded spot. Go straight to her house after school is out, okay? She left without an answer. I shuddered. Why did she want to meet me? Why now? I contemplated her reasons for wanting to meet me all through the night. Does she know I know? Does she know about Sonica Mam? What happened to Prakash Sir? Innumerable questions swirled around inside my head, keeping sleep just beyond my reach and making me toss and turn until dawn. I fought back my exhaustion as I made my way to the mess and had my breakfast in the morning, forcing food down my throat, even though I wasn't very hungry. I really needed the energy for lunch today. It was confirmed that Prakash Sir had resigned when we went to class, and I didn't hear a word from Rachna Mam either. I don't really know what happened, but I could feel the tension in the air. Those who knew the truth of St. Agnes could easily sense the hostility the teachers had towards each other, and towards me, but they left me alone. Orders from the top, I guess. It was a lackluster day compared to what I had begun to experience from my life these days, but the tension kept on building inside me as we got closer and closer to lunchtime. And I was so nervous about meeting Sister Mercy that I was a quivering mess and my shaking knees could barely tolerate my body's weight. As I stood in front of her house, I realized that my throat was very dry. I should have drank some water before coming here. Would the water she give me be safe? O oh no. Would the food be poisoned? I quickly brushed aside these irrational thoughts and reminded myself that she could have killed me a long time ago if she wanted to. She was obviously keeping me alive for some reason. But what was that reason? I shook my head and opened the gate to her house, and it gave way soundlessly, no loud creaking or groaning, like you would expect from the house of a child-murdering witch. It still looked like my haven, the place I'd run off each time the bullying had gotten especially worse. You have to give credit to Sister Mercy for being fair and impartial when it came to her job, because she never showed any favoritism or abused her position in any way to take my side and punish those who were bullying me. But she was always there for me, to listen to me whine about my problems. I guess at some level I still can't quite believe that she is such a ruthless monster. I heard her voice as soon as I stepped into the house, making me jump in surprise. Nana, is that you? She asked. I'm here in the kitchen. Come. I followed the delicious smell of Frankie's wafting from the kitchen and began walking before I even realized it, like a child being manipulated by the Pied Piper. Sister Mercy saw me as I walked into the dining room and her weathered face broadened into a bright smile. There's my sweet child, she said enthusiastically. Have a seat. Lunch is coming right up. I made your favorite. I sat down on my usual spot on the dining table and began waiting in silence, tapping my foot nervously as she hummed in the kitchen. I didn't have to wait long. Sister Mercy brought piping hot chicken Frankies after only a couple of minutes had passed. Here you go, she sang as she put the plate in front of me. I hesitated. What's wrong, she asked. Eat before they get cold. I took a bite. They were as delicious as ever and hunger had finally overtaken my fears so I gorged on those Frankies. I'm so proud of you, Nana, she whispered with a smile. Why? I asked softly. She chuckled. You know, Prakash is dead, she said. I froze, not knowing what to say or do. Yeah, she continued with a grin on her face. Rachna is too. My mouth dropped. 
Close your mouth when you're eating, Nana, she gently admonished me. It's rude to talk with food in your mouth. I quickly obliged. They found his body last night. Someone doused him in Bashma and cut his head off. We found him burnt to a crisp with his head missing. Gruesome stuff, she said in a matter-of-fact manner. My hands were shaking with fear as I took another bite, desperately avoiding eye contact with her. After the cops left last night, she added, someone killed Rachna too. Probably someone from Burkasha's camp. Probably a whole bunch of them. Now my children are all frothing at the mouth, waiting to bite each other's heads off. It's quite messy indeed. She started clapping and I flinched, finally deciding to look into her eyes. I was shocked to see pride and admiration there, not the wrath I was expecting. Well done, Nana, she said seemingly in awe of me. You managed to kill two of the trusted pets, all with a singular spectacular performance. Gosh, she whispered, I so regret missing out on that, burning Prakash's face in public like that, and using Rachna's attempts to hypnotize you against her, and taking them both down in one fell swoop. You are so far above and beyond what I'd expected. What do you want from me? I asked, my voice cracking. My cheeks felt wet, and I realized I was crying. So who's helping you? She asked, ignoring my question. Who was it that gave you that bashma? Who was it that invited those infernal trident tattooed freaks last night? It was they who killed Prakash. Had to be it. No one with Rachna is gutsy enough to pull something like that. So who was it? I shivered as I saw a glimpse of bloodlust and insanity in her eyes. Was it one of the teachers? Someone who's not a Rakshasa? Or was it one of my own children? She asked breathlessly. No, wait, she shouted. Don't tell me. I want to figure this out on my own. Oh god, I haven't felt this excited in centuries. She cackled and I shrank back in fear. Oh, Nana, she said gently when she saw my reaction. Are you scared of me? We can't have that. You, you're a monster, I cried. You kill kids. You're evil. Evil? She looked confused. Why am I evil, Nana? Because I killed people? Floods kill people. Earthquakes do too. And cyclones ravage the coasts of this nation each year. All of these acts of the supposed merciful God kill thousands each year. Is he evil too? I didn't know what to say to that. Our understanding of good and evil are all contextual, Nana, she said. What that chicken is to you, humans are to my pets. Why is it evil for them to feed? Is a lion evil in hunting a gazelle? It is just the natural order of things. Are we not all God's children? We are all trying to survive here, aren't we? I don't recognize this woman. She was not Sister Mercy I'd known my whole life. The kind, loving woman who tried to help anyone in need? Or more accurately, she never existed at all. And this is what she had been all along. The Sister Mercy I knew was just an illusion, a shadow on the wall, gone with the dawn of night. What do you want with me? I asked with a firm voice. I need your help, Nana, her expression softened. I don't enjoy killing children and drinking their blood, but I have to or else I'll wither away and die. But you, you can change that. How? I asked. I don't know why you've assumed that I'm special or that I have powers, but I don't. I'm honest. Oh, but you are special, Nana. Very much so, she replied. You walk on the edge of life and death. You are the key to unlocking the doors of immortality, something I've searched for centuries. There it was again. Centuries. How old was she? You can see the dead, can't you? She asked. I gasped as I thought of the half-faced woman. Does she know of her? I don't have solid proof of that yet, but it's something I've sensed from you, for lack of a better word. She answered her own question. You are your mother's daughter, after all. How do you know my mother? I demanded. You told me you found me on your doorstep. Did you know my parents? Her eyes ran away from mine. Why? Was that guilt, or was it just an act? Yes, she whispered. I knew your mother. She was a student of mine, in more ways than one. Undoubtedly, one of the most talented witches I had ever cared for. Though I'm sure you have the potential of surpassing even her. Her eyes glazed over as she started reminiscing in silence. My heart started beating faster. I had wanted to know about my parents for so long, 
and she'd always told me she knew nothing about them. Now I was finally getting the truth about them. She left me after she met your father, she said with a sad smile. She said she couldn't do this anymore. Oh, young love, I had to leave her, of course. Leave her? She let them go willingly? Then what happened to them? I found out about your birth, she replied. I flew in to see you, on a plane, of course, not on a broom. She laughed obnoxiously and then began speaking again. It was when I saw you and sensed the great power within you, I knew I had to have you, and I knew that she would never let me take you, so I did the unthinkable. My mouth dropped as red heart tears gushed down my face. You killed them? I shouted. Oh, Nana, I'm so sorry. It's just that I had finally found what I've been looking for so long, that I couldn't... Bitch! I screamed and swore for the first time in my life. She began talking again, but I threw my plate against the wall and started to run. I hadn't even taken three steps when I felt an impossible force and I was thrown back to my chair. I felt bound, as if someone had tied me up. I looked at Sister Mercy. She hadn't moved from her chair, but had lazily pointed a finger at me. What are you doing, Nana? I'm not finished talking, she gently scolded me. I know you're angry at me and you have every right to be. I have wronged you, terribly so. And I know that you may never forgive me, but allow me the chance to make it up to you. How? I asked. How can you ever make this up to me? You killed my family. I can if you let me try, she said. Let's make a deal, Nana. What? What deal? I questioned angrily. You help me achieve my dream of immortality and I'll help you bring your parents back. Together we can conquer death. Together we can conquer death? Really? Could I bring my parents back? A tiny flame of hope sprang within me. I mean, with the kinds of crazy stuff that I had seen, was that really impossible? My mom. It could just be me and you from here on, Nana, she continued. I would leave the Rakshasas behind for your friends and the police will run away. Just the two of us, like it's always been. My brain had turned to mush. I just didn't know what to say. I knew that she was the one who had killed my parents, but this deep sense of longing I felt for them, I just couldn't ignore it or ignore what Sister Mercy was saying. You don't have to decide just yet. I know they will take some time to make their move. You can make your decision before that. Just think about it. I felt her invisible grip loosen and I could finally move freely once again. I wiped my face and left without saying another word. The next couple of days passed by in a flash. I don't remember much of what happened. I was too lost in my own thoughts. The cop with the bandage on his head stuck around for a day or two, but soon left our school. I was sure that he was now preparing to attack the other teachers, with Sonic and Mam on his side. Christmas break soon arrived, with most of the kids going for their homes, leaving the school looking empty and forlorn. Vrinda had gone too, but Carol was still here, so it wasn't like I was all alone. Two days after Christmas break began, I felt it in the air. It was going to happen this night. As I stood looking out at the school grounds, my cold breath misting the glass windows. I knew that one way or the other, it was going to end tonight. And I had finally made my decision. The final part of the story will drop next Monday at midnight.